So we're all here because of this guy, <laughs> me and Logan. We all want to make games, and he has one of the best game philosophies of all times. Look at what you're doing in real life and try to put it into a game in some form or fashion, you know, and work on it and hone it until it is fun. That means like watching flowers grow. We all play that game. We all play Pikmin. And right now, I'm about to enter a time trial. That's what I'm doing right now. This is a game we're playing. And so as an independent, play, as an independent gamer, you didn't just stand there. You got up and started doing something. And usually you got did start doing something because of you got tired of seeing sequels. August 1, Opera 2, August Opera 3, August Opera 4. You just got tired of seeing sequels. Or you couldn't get into the industry because of the old guard. Somebody's sitting at the gate. You have to know somebody to know somebody to know somebody to every studio you're going into to get in. You have to play that game too, right? The game of knowing things and knowing someone. And you know, it's very stealth-like on how to get into the proper gaming industries they want to deem it, the published games. But we, went, we did our research. We figured that we're going to start our own games and figure things out. And we started mapping our own course. We all jumped out there like, hey, I got Unity, I got Unreal, I got a nice powerful PC I put together, I got some friends, everybody thinks this is a good idea, hell yeah, I'm going to make me a game. So you got your tools together, you know, you got your Wacom tablet you bought off eBay or from a friend that handed you down, you got the ingredients together, had the right team members, you put them all together in one place, and you were bold. You sat on the edge, and you took your first step. You got down the computer in your, in your gentleman or your lady gear, and you say, hey, we're going to make a game. And you looked around the room of, of people that smell like GameStop and say, rock on, we're all making games here. <laughs> then you start thinking about what game am I really making? And you're looking for that spark. And it's hard to find that spark. And then you're like, you know what? I need a little peace and quiet because this room right now, I'm getting distracted from everybody else's great idea that's going to change all the gaming. So I sat down in solitude to work on my game. But then it started falling apart. We've all been there. We've seen our games fall apart, and we got lost in it. We got caught in the fog of our own ideas in our mind, and we started to drown. And all we wanted to do was get away to somewhere peaceful, quiet, like a beach. We thought the world was too crowded with ideas similar to ours, and yet it was felt completely empty at the same exact time. And we started falling into a moment of darkness. Then we said, hey, why don't I go back and just get a normal job at, another, at a studio or a publisher and do something with them? And all through this, you've been playing a game with yourself. And we don't even realize we've been playing a game with ourselves. It's the imposter game. And a lot of us fall into it, and a lot of us need to come out of it. Everybody has a great idea, and you were right that first time when you had that first spark. And then your friends look at you all funny. Like, what are you doing? I thought you were going to make your own game. Or what are you doing? I thought you were going to actually be a part of a studio. You're supposed to be the next Miyamoto. That's what they keep telling us. Then your frenemies look at you and they're ready to eat you alive, right? Those are all the people that doubted you and you pay them too much attention. They're like the little, they're like the little minion guys in Metal Gear Solid, the new one, and you pay them too much attention because you don't want to kill them. You want to numb them all and make sure you get this, the hostage out. And the only thing that's important is you can run into the building, grab the hostage, and shoot your way out. Sure, it makes the game a little bit more boring, but it gets the job done. And that's who your frenemies are, those little minions that walk around, that say, hey, I hear something, and you run away the moment they come towards you. Then you start thinking about all your old childhood dreams and how broken they are, all those game ideas you had thinking of when you were a child. But the easy thing about being a game de designer, when something's broken, guess what we do? We fix it. That's a game. We start crafting. And we don't realize we're crafting. Instead, we wait for the next train of thought to come along. And life keeps move, move, passing by us at the speed of light. And we don't take the time to actually grab on one of those light rails and ride with it. We start getting nostalgic. We start putting in Smash Brothers, Mario Brothers, just trying to find our way around. And none of our great ideas are in our old dreams. They're in our new dreams. And we just have to find those dreams. It's a puzzle. It's like Tetris. You don't know it's falling from the sky. You just put it in the right place, and it works. And but we want to curl up, we want to get love from people, we want people to hug over us and everything, but everybody's just like us. Everybody in this room here is a game developer. We're all trying to go to new heights. There's one of us in every one of these balloons. And the world looks a lot smaller from when you're staring down below it. And sometimes that's the best place to be, because you can be caught up in your thoughts, and you should be, because that's where you can go play. 
and you take everything you do, like I say in game mechanics, everything you do in life and you put it together and play with it. Swing is a physics game. How do you make physics work? Going down a slide is a physics game. And you figure it out. It's an engine. You, all, everything around us in life is basically a game. And we're trying to definitely figure it out. And so from time to time, go catch a moment of awe. Leave the, leave the keyboard alone. Walk away. Walk away from everything that you're familiar with and go see something that you're not familiar with. This is definitely in Utah. And I tell everybody, go see the Big Five. Go see it. There's times that I've taken some of my dev members out to go see it because we're doing a rock climbing game in Oculus, and I do a lot of VR development now, you know. Instead of waiting for that next train of thought, just go running. You know, there's no reason for you to not run. Running does a couple of things. It gives us orientation, and, allow, and try to picture yourself running from a third-person camera because a lot of problems in games are the camera work. So when you go run around the block, run around your neighborhood, you'll run into different things. And imagine being a camera, play with perspective. Run outside yourself, you know? Go dancing. Dancing is the best way to learn about animation. A lot of people don't realize that. You, I worked on a fighting game. I took everybody to dance classes. We went to swing classes, we went to salsa classes. Because when you play in a fighting game, it's a dance and you just have to figure it out. When you're playing Madden football, Madden football is one of the best fighting games ever made. It's 11 versus 11, and it's a fighting game. Like, you have dive, you can, you can uh, throw stiff arms. You, it's, it's great, it's great. And this is the best way to learn how to create your animations and create your AI is to dance. Because when you're dancing, if you're the leader or you're the follow, you're actually working with somebody else, which is considered, you consider that an AI. And you can learn a lot from that. So next time you're working, working on your game and you're looking for some guidance, get a different perspective, and the universe will be yours. And at the end of the day, we're just making games. We're not curing cancer here. We're just making people happy. And the easiest thing that we can ever do is figure a way to make people happy. Curing cancer is saving the lives. And that's making somebody feel great. We're just trying to make you just happy. And I like to usually close my talks out with Gerald Jerry Lawson. Does anybody know who Gerald Jerry Lawson is? He's the father of the video game cartridge. He created the first video game console. And I like closing out with Jerry because Jerry's what I call an alicorn. He has like everything. He's a designer, engineer, artist. He does everything. He was one of Steve Jobs' confidants and Steve Wozniak's confidants. He's, not long, he's no longer with us, but it was him that worked with Fairchild Semiconductor to say, hey, I can create a machine where you don't have to have a video game cabinet and everybody can have it in their house. And they said, when you fail, we're going to fire you. We're going to give you the money to do it. And he created the Fairchild Channel F, and it was the first video game cartridge and console that worked together. And very few of us know about this guy. And he was one of us. He was an independent gamer. He helped find the Homebrew Society, the Homebrew Club that's in San Francisco, which is considered the first independent gaming network. And he refused to go to any publisher and work on his own games. And he had some very interesting things he was working on. And, you know, since as last, as last week, we lost this guy, Prince. And he's probably the greatest artist of all time because Prince has a vault of music, and probably most of it probably is horrible. And horrible by his standards, that is, not by ours. But the point was that he took every room in his house who was able to record and build off of. And as game developers and game designers, everything you do is something you can build a game off of. So when I think about this, think about what Miyamoto was truly saying. He was saying, look at everything that you do in life and find the mechanics in it, find the systems. Like when you catch a bus to catch a train, what systems at play there? When you're playing a sport, when you're playing a game, when you're inviting your friends out for dinner or you're cooking a dinner, what games are you playing? You know, you know that one friend you always have, you have to tell them that the dinner's at 6, but it's really at 7.30 because you know they won't show up to 8 if you tell them it was at 6 anyway. You know, what kind of game is that? You know, what kind of dialogue system are you using there? You know, there's a lot of things that we do every day that can improve our game design. And sometimes when you're so, all of us have a tendency to focus in and hone in on the game that we're making that we forget about the rest of the world. And fortunately, going into VR and AR, 
our whole thing is to look at the rest of the world and figure out how to make a game out of it. And unfortunately, I have a head start because I've always thought of games the way Miyamoto wanted us to do. You take the mundane things in life and you make a game out of it that's fun. Like, if I told you what Tetris was before you ever played it, would you ever thought that game was fun? <laughs> Let's be honest. Would anybody thought that game was fun? Or if I told you I have a little plumber character, I'm going to drop him in this world, he's going to go chase after this princess that's never at any of the castles, and all he does is eat shrooms and spit fireballs, <laughs> would you think that game was fun? And he jumps. All he does is jump. He just jumps around everywhere. We won't think that. But somehow he figured out how to find the fun in all the mundane things in life. And as independent developers, that's our job. You not you don't you have the privilege of not doing what a publisher wants, a uh, mainstream publisher wants us to do, and that's just to make money and please the general palate of the general population. You can make a message in your game. You can make your game fun. You can even make your game depressing. Nobody has that privilege but us, and we should take advantage of that. 